Now that we have power back, welcome back to some more Stormworks. I'm Stormwinter Gaming, and today I am back here with a brand new boat I have just finished building. And this is a six month long on and off building process of completing this pretty large boat. It boasts five stories, something like 50,000 tons, and eight car capacity, 333 person capacity, and it flies under the name of Mestre Simeo. And that is a Portuguese name because it actually is based out of the municipality of Horta and I didn't know this off the top of my head I actually had to google that because this is actually based off of a real life boat here and as we're getting on I am going to fold up all the different pivots here because if we do go into our third person camera right here you can see it's got a pretty advanced little system of getting cars on and off of this ferry and the main reason I did create this ferry here was just to kind of cart around all the different land vehicles I have in Stormworks because they were kind of, you know, stuck on the main island with nowhere else to go. So I wanted a pretty large ship to get just about anything around the Stormworks world here on the main form of transport, the oceans. After packing up that ramp on the back side of the boat, I have moved up to the control center here, or the bridge, whatever you want to call it. This is usually the first place people go to on the boat after, you know, grabbing it off of that workshop. And if you do want to grab it off the workshop, I will leave that link in the description down below. Anyways, enough self-promotion for the boat here. Let's get this thing rolling because I do want to get it out of the port. Not only does it do it to my boat, but just about any boat, if you have a large boat in a port here it creates a lot of lag and this is no exception so I'm going to get the two engines started here so we can kind of just pull it out of the port here we need to turn on the cooling systems and the fuel pumps then we can come over here and since this thing uses huge engines we'll see later in the video you got to listen to the sound of the two warming up here <laughs> And there we are, those huge diesel engines that'll be powering us through the water here. Uh, they take a second or two to get started. And because I don't use any super advanced system or glitch in the game to get them moving or started, they take an actual second to move here. So I'm gonna bring us out of the dock and we're gonna start the actual just full length boat tour. If you guys are looking for controls in the engine room and everything, and controls in the engineering room i'll be doing that well controls in the engine room will be later in this video i'll post a time stamp down below as well as on the screen now we're gonna jump to the bottom of the boat and go up to the top just a couple of flight steps later we've made it down to the engine room and this is actually one of the two main reasons i built this boat i talked about earlier about wanting a large ferry to move cars around stormworks but but another big reason I wanted to build this boat, you know, very large was because I never used anything bigger than the one by one modular engines. And I wanted that, you know, old school, huge engine of a boat. I guess it's not really old school. Even new boats like cruise ships and such have those huge engines in an engine room, you know, the things where you could probably stand in a cylinder if you wanted to. So this is that huge engine I wanted to create here. It is an X-16 and I've got two of them. And when I initially built the boat, I thought that would be, you know, adequate. But once I finally fine-tuned it and got gear ratios, it's a bit overkill. If I'm honest, it's a lot overkill. So we've got a lot more power than what we really need. But, you know, it is still a massive and a pretty fun engine here. And I've left a 
bunch of storage space and you know extra space to move around the engine on the top here as well as down below with this little staircase if you ever do need to come and fix anything on the engine if it is broken or fire damage or megalodon damage maybe but that is stuff here to do as well we do also have a you know escape hatch here i guess down to the main deck here so if you ever do need to get out of the engine room in a hurry that is one little escape hatch there and as you have already noticed probably all the lights in this boat are controlled by player sensors this is another thing another update i never really played with until this boat here so it is a little bit annoying if you go into another room and then you try to come and look back at the previous room but you know it works it keeps the electric bills down well i guess the gas bills because you have to pay less for fuel so moving on we do also have an equipment little storage space down here in the engine room for whatever you might need and a ton of different dials giving you what do we have here i've forgotten already engine rps temperature and the clutch values as well as the four different main fuel tanks there is also a super emergency fuel tank in the front of the boat but i left it at zero because it does weigh down the top a lot or the front of the boat excuse me so we do also have a couple buttons here we can pump the emergency fuel tanks and just turn on the back lights down here another thing i did add in since the boat does have an autopilot system i added in a little you know indicator here to tell us how far we are until we reach the destination because the control room is so far away if it's a single manned crew on this boat it takes a minute to get up to the control room so i left this here i'm actually going to unlock the fuel connectors so we don't have to come back down later on there is also a crew bathroom down here with a shower and a little fish tank <laughs> i think i've used this in a couple builds now but i like that little fish tank there moving right along to the next floor the second floor here we have engineering or whatever you want to call it and yet again when i first initially built this boat i wanted that really cool kind of old school design with those huge engines so i put a huge window bay so anyone in engineering can see all the engines here and we do have yet and yet again excuse me another bank of dials here to show rps temperature clutch and then i also added in the just main fuel here main fuel tanks and then we have engine runtime and that is in minutes and i do have a typo there I didn't realize that till now, but as you go along, you'll just be able to know how long it's run. I don't know. It was something I saw on, you know, smaller vehicles and stuff like uh, go-karts and things, but I thought it was a cool little addition that just took a timer to make. I've also added in the ability to disable alarms here and bilge pumps, as well as a couple overrides here. We can override throttle reduction and high wind for autopilot, and that's probably a bunch of gibberish but you'll understand it a little bit later. We can override smooth RPS, so instead of a gentle increase and decrease in throttle, it can jump up really quickly. So, you know, if you want to get somewhere faster, you'll probably turn on that button. And then you can also increase engine RPS to 10 in engineering here as well. And here we have an automated heat control panel for each floor. And each floor, the main area actually has a temperature sensor that sees if that floor is the correct temperature or not. And then it'll turn on and off that heater. So you can turn on the auto heater and you do actually have to turn on that button as well. Oops, excuse me. If we're doing floor three, you turn on the button and you turn on auto heat. So now it will heat it up because apparently we're not at a high enough temperature and apparently two and three are in the same bubble of air or something they share the same temperature maybe they're close enough moving right along we do have an entire electric panel that i think needs to be reworked a little bit because there is a bug in this system but 
that is something for the future here we do also have the electric connectors on the main deck that i'm going to unlock here and we do need to turn on manual generators if for some reason the automatic system isn't working this will just lock the generator clutch on so you know you always be making power instead of just toggling on and off when the batteries are low with the automated system we do have the automatic stabilization on this boat as well and if you want to for some reason you can disable it i wouldn't recommend it but it's there if you need to and an engine fire suppression system this is actually automatic with yet again another temperature sensor somewhere in here oh it's right there on each side so hopefully it would catch the engines overheating and you know put out the fire but if it doesn't somebody in the crew is gonna have to run down and you know put out the fire by clicking this button here and then if it's automated and for some reason it went off incorrectly you can disable the system here with that key button and then there is a ton of fire extinguishers in that room as well as in here moving right along there is a lot to see on this boat Oof. we have the crew quarters and i went with a pretty large engine because engine pretty large kitchen here for a large crew because this can actually sleep what is it a crew of 13 or 14 it's two four six seven 14 15 15 people including the captain but the captain has his own quarters up there and one of the funny things this is actually the oven out of my sailboat but i added in a little temperature gauge it just flies up whenever you turn on the oven here and then it drops to zero unrealistically when you turn it off but oh well a cool little feature nonetheless i did also add in a little television i knew people liked the dvd logo so i added that in when you turn it on and then we also have sawyer news here for all of your news news <laughs> moving right along we're gonna turn that off i did also add in like a little cabinet bay to keep whatever you need you know hard hats vests and stuff for the crew as well as a little coat rack Moving right along, I'm only gonna go down one side because both sides, both of these doors on the boat are exactly the same here. So these are the crew quarters for sleeping if you need to do a longer trip with the boat and you have a large crew. Each one of these bedrooms is just about exactly the same except for a different bed, a different bed color. And the one at the end of the hall actually has the room for a third bed in here. So I don't know. You can put the uh, the lowest ranking member there. And since it is able to do long hauls, like all the way up to the Arctic and back, we do have the availability to do laundry on here as well. Not that it actually works, but you now it looks cool. So let's close all that up and we're gonna move right along. So that is all the crew quarters. There is also medical facilities on here just in case. And it has, I think, everything you'll need from defibrillators to first aid kits to radios and flashlights. And you've got that medical bed. So I guess you could have medical personnel on the boat as well. Moving over to this side of the boat, we do have the men's and women's bathroom here with, you know, working stalls and everything. I was pretty happy that all this, you know, worked in this little area here. I'm still kind of unhappy with the angle of the walls there, but say la vie. I got it as good as I could get it. And if we go over to the other side, there is also the women's bathroom here. So as you can notice as well, every single room in this boat does have a fluid meter and fluid ports. So if it does sense any water, it should immediately start pumping it out because that's the bilge pump system I was talking about earlier in engineering. Moving up to the next floor, we have the, the dining hall, I guess you'd call it, or the cafe, whatever you want to call it here. Yet again, we have a kitchen. This time it is stocked with the gearbox, I guess, drink things here. What would you call that? A, um, a drink bar, whatever you want to call it. The tap. You have drinks on tap here. 
and you got the same exact oven as you have downstairs for cooking up stuff pretty large pretty large stove why did i want to call it a stove a fridge and a microwave just in case and <laughs> i was showing this to a buddy and they commented they liked how realistic the uh, microwave was because it was plugged in <laughs> Just silly little features like that. If we go out of the dining hall here, here is the main hold for all of your different cars. And we'll come out here real quick. I was talking about that little access hatch to the engine. This is where you'd come up from the engine room. So, you know, I guess it's a fire escape as well. If for some reason you can't get out of, you know, the crew quarters or the bathrooms or something on a lower floor, you could have this as a fire escape as well. We do also offer a small cargo bay. It's nothing crazy large, but if you need to hold a few crates in there or something, I don't know, something can be thrown in there as well. Earlier, we did see the controls for the ramp here, but we do also have a couple different connectors on here. We do have electrical connection and fuel connection here as well. Well, this can supply other vessels with power. It can't supply any fuel, but it can take sure a lot of fuel for itself. And one thing I remember to add it on this boat, it is a non-powered door for the electrical door here because if the boat runs out of power and you can't open the door to give it power, that's a bit of a problem oversight in previous designs I've made. I've also made these little winches here. If you do need to connect cars up to the boat, I did also add in little inlaid, um, one of these rope anchors, but you know, if you need to pull something onto the boat, these kind of work. I haven't really built a good winch in forever. So you have to kind of take the electrical cable out, pull it out and then, you know, click it back in. So it, it's an odd system, but it works to some extent. So I won't dwell on it for much longer. I'm moving right along. This is kind of just a passageway. It tells you what's down below cafe and the restrooms. If you are part of the crew and you need to get to the front deck, here it is with plenty of, they call them transponders here, but they're the kind of like rope anchors here larger ones and i did add smaller ones as well and if you do actually want to anchor it anywhere with rope anchors we do have some rope and rope anchors as well as you can see the bay for the anchors here now that we are back inside here i'm going to go to the main passenger room and this holds something like 150 to 200 people so this is less economy class more you know comfy seating here it's actually a design i got off of the workshop for these seats here but i did a quarter a sort of reclaimed floor here with the wood in reality i just didn't want to do more paint blocks because you know the more there are the more it lags out the game so i gave it these sort of wide planked discolored wooden floor here i think it looks good but you know, some people don't like it as much. There is also a restroom in here if you do need to use it with a cool little mirror. I've added into this mirror design into all bathrooms except for the one at the engine level because technically it's underwater and Stormworks doesn't like cameras underwater. It kind of gives them a weird blue tint to them. I guess it's the water in front of it per se. There is also some more equipment on this level just in case you need any of this from hazmat suits to firefighting to thermal clothing it was just another little pocket in the ship that i you know stuck some equipment so you don't have to go all the way downstairs to get this type of equipment you can come right down from the control room here and as you can see this is the control room we saw it a little bit earlier when we got on our way but I'm going to start just talking about all the different systems in here and there is a lot of different systems. I'm actually going to start with this weird little thing right here because we already started the engines earlier. Since it's the very large boat here, you do have the availability to divulge controls to the left or right side. So if you're coming into a port and you need to push to this side of the boat and anchor on this side or, you know, connect to this side, you're able to see much closer where 
you know what's happening on this side especially with these windows here how close you are to the port so you're able to drive from either side and they give you you know this menu here that gives generators both the engines and speed values as well as a map and then it gives you is this weather control it gives you proximities and you have spotlight control right here so if we go to the roof real quick as you can see the spotlight on what is this the starboard side yeah i believe this is no this is the port side left left is port and you have controls for that as well and once you get into the seat or i guess it's the steering wheel you have battery power here you have your heading and you have your fuel values for the two main tanks here all right and it's just about the same on both sides here if you do ever need to cut power or turn power back on for anything in the control room the main breaker and everything is here for the control room i just made it a separate system since there's so much electric going to here we do actually have the availability to use a microphone and speakers to send and or receive a voice from this box here i've never actually tested that out so if you guys have tested out my system or someone else's system in game leave a comment down below i'd like to know but Let's jump on to the main area here, and I'm actually going to flip these two screens down. They give me directional cameras for each direction on the boat. And we have the depth meter here with a cool little, you know, design to it. You may recognize the weather station and all the different proximity warnings from the port and starboard driving sides. It's the same exact thing here, just to tell you if you're close to anything or the different weather things from outside. We do also have anchor control here. If we go into third person real quick, we can see those two main anchors on the front. You can drop them, but they don't do anything. They don't have any magals, so they're not really going to stop you or hold you in place. Sorry, but yeah, that that's a thing. But all right, what else do we have here? We have uh, Jersey's radar system, which I'm not 100% sure if it works, but you know, it's here if somebody can get us to work. We have our lighting control panel. So just four different light types here. And then we have the build pumps if you need to turn it on from the control room, emergency fuel pumps. We can lower that antenna tower, which will come in handy later as well as the depth alarm. And since we aren't any dangerous depth right now, it's not going off. So I'm just gonna leave it on for now. But by default, it is off. So you have to click that button to turn it on. And if we look at lowering that antenna tower, it just folds forward. And this is mainly because without that down, it can't fit underneath the railroad tracks going over the ocean. So, I wanted that availability for it to go just about anywhere in the Stormworks world. So it's just got a pivot on there that'll pivot down and pivot right back up when you're done with it. When you're done going underneath that bridge. We've got a map here and then we've got the engine one and two starts. And these are just warnings that they're warming up. So they're not going to be moving until it gets up to that five RPS. Moving to the middle of the boat. Earlier, we saw this thing here. If we turn on either of these two, it'll tell us cooling systems or the fuel pumps are inactive and give us a warning. And, you know, that'll pop up until you turn both of those on when the engines are running. This boat does actually have the option to run in single engine mode. If you want to use less fuel, it will decrease your top speed, but you probably will get more mileage out of the single engine running instead of double. You will have to pump fuel between the tanks though, because they only use their own tanks, not a joined one. This little dial right here i guess you'd call it is your throttle as you can tell it's a very large boat and once we get on here it takes a second to get going why is my throttle not working right now odd i'll have to fix that in a second i did also add in a compass ball and a indicator to tell us if autopilot and bow thrusters are active moving over to the left if you ever saw my ocean cruiser boat you'll remember this kind of 
display here with a couple of different menus for generators for both the engines for speed rps and temperature and then you can just choose what type of speed you want i think i default to knots because that's the usual one for boats but in every other menu i believe yeah your speed shows we do also have a fuel menu note that is just the two main ones but that is the two fuel tanks that the engines pull, pull from we do also have autopilot it tells us the distance until and the bearing we are going at we already saw the fuel pumps and the cooling systems we can disable auto generators if you don't want that to slow down a little bit but eventually as you can tell by the ticking down electric this boat runs through a lot of electric per second so you're probably going to want to leave the auto generators on but there's availability to turn it off if you want to. And then there is night mode, just turning on the, uh, the rear lights here for all of the things. And this cool little Tron looking light kind of helps you move around at night a bit more. And then we have a couple unlocks. If you need to put anything in the cargo door, you're going to have to unlock it from the control room. If you want to bring any cars or vehicles on to the main deck, you're going to have to unlock those ramp controls here. And this is our docking gear. If you need to go, you know, crawl into any dock, that'll slow you down to, I think it's two or three knots instead of the regular, I think it cruises at 13 or 14 knots in the regular speed. And then again, if you don't want to use this, there's engine RPS, the battery, and the depth warning here. We have the foghorn here. You can hear that emergency flares, which will actually pop off six of them in succession right here behind that, behind the uh, the main antenna there. I'm not going to do that now because that kind of lags us, but we do also have the availability to hold throttle at one if you don't want to stand there and hold your throttle. And you can increase your engine RPS all the way up to 10 because by default it only runs at a fuel saving six RPS one more control thing here we do have horizontal thrusters it uses the front two bow thrusters and two rear thrusters as well to you know push it to the port or starboard in a horizontal fashion although it is quite slow to use this you just have to enable it and then click whichever way you want to go so if we want to go to the right click it and then as you can see that guy is going right there and the back thrusters are going as well due to the odd shape of the hull you need a lot more power on the back end and the front end to move it but as we can see it's slowly moving to the starboard side of the boat all right we're gonna turn that system off because that one uses a ton of power because that's only powered by electric motors so the final system here is actually a really cool autopilot system that I got off the workshop. And I'm going to have to put the creator's name down in the video down below um, on the screen, excuse me, down on the bottom of the screen because I don't remember their name. And I do apologize, but this kind of point based system is really cool and it is very accurate. I say very accurate because um, let's say we want to go down this channel here if you do want to zoom in or out you have to go hold Q move then hold E and it'll zoom out hold E then hold Q and it'll zoom in but you can have it you know go up this channel here and it's perfectly fine move over to that spot right there we're gonna actually you know just park it here what is happening right now Did you guys see that? I'm just trying to do a video and all the... What natural disaster is... It's a whirlpool. Of course it's a whirlpool. You know, I didn't think these things would spawn that quickly, but... Apparently they do. Anyway, besides the fact, let's go and reset to over there. And I'm going to get it going just by clicking autopilot here. And as you can see, now we've got 11,000 meter trip here and i really should have put a timer to tell us how long it was going to take to get there but oh well say lovey 
And then I am going to also increase our engine RPS to 10. So that'll set our max speed to, I think, 33 to 34 knots, depending on the weight distribution in the boat here. We do also have the captain's quarters here. So the captain is able to um, and take, I don't know, a nap in here if he wants. It's right off the engine room. As well as, since this is a passenger ferry, we have a full array of security cameras. So we've got the stern vehicle hold, the top deck exterior, the bow deck, third floor hallway, we've got starboard passenger interior, port passenger interior, vehicle hold, and the cafe. We've got lower deck halls, crew quarters, the engineering, and the engine room. So if you do ever want to check on the engine and it is a you know single person crew here you could do that through the security monitors you know i guess the only thing you'd really be looking for here is i don't know if they're overheating maybe or on fire but moving on from that while it is going on its little autopilot mission here I'm going to go outside to the top deck here. And yet again, it's a bunch of seats. It's a ferry boat. It's designed more for carrying people, but it can also carry up to eight cars on its main deck there. We do have a small lifeboat right here that, you know, can be launched either from the side there or from this driver's seat here. The real life version actually does also have inflatable lifeboats that pop out. If you look on the side of the boat, where that little bump is underneath the smokestacks, that's able to carry a lot more people in the event of a sinking boat. But I'm not able to do, you know, inflatable boats in Stormworks. So yeah, I've just got that one. So you could save eight people nine people so i mean if you have more than nine people on a stormworks server good luck but originally this boat was built in spain so i am flying the spanish flag here that's actually yet again another thing i got off of the workshop and if you are sinking and there's not enough room on the lifeboats hopefully there is but if there's not there are also life jackets on the top deck up here as well same thing there is on the uh, real life boat. And then if we move up to the top, right above the control room, we have a couple different things. This is the radar bar for that. Um, I think it's MRN Jersey's radar. We've got a couple different antennas. We've got those two spotlights on both sides. Those flares I was talking about earlier. You know, fog horns, all the different instrumentation. And we've got this pretty large antenna tower here. And if you want to, you can go all the way up to the top. I've liked doing this a few times. You can kind of just watch from an eagle eye view. I always thought of this as kind of like the crow's nest from a pirate ship. Kind of see for miles around. With very little obstructions on the actual boat. So yeah, that is about the here i think i'm actually going to load a car on as well well on second thought this is actually already a very long video so what do you guys think leave a like down below if you want to see me take this out for another video you know load some cars on it have some multiplayer shenanigans on it probably because i don't know i don't want to do it just by myself i'll get somebody else to jump in here and we'll go do something with it maybe throw it into a volcano or something i don't think you can get a boat into a volcano probably throw it into a whirlpool or something with some cars on the uh, back deck here but i don't know i think i've done a pretty good job the one thing i'm disappointed in this boat mm, two things the auto stabilization is sometimes iffy you'll see it shake around a little bit because it is a pinch slow but if i speed it up anymore when you're sitting anywhere it kind of jitters for some reason i don't know how to fix that but yeah and another thing i wasn't super happy with was this back ramp it kind of works in most situations but every once in a while there'll be a dock somewhere where you kind of have to just wing it because i do have these magal arms and the magal autos 
And what that does is it put these arms down and it auto levels itself. And there's a sensor on there that auto senses. So you back up the boat to a dock. And once you get close enough, the magals will turn on and you'll hit and they'll just connect to the dock. So then you can unfold the ramp onto like above the, uh, the dock there and load, you know, cars or trucks or whatever you need to into the ferry. Yeah. There's a couple other crazy things I probably didn't even talk about on this boat, but yet again, if you do want to explore it, I will leave a link to the workshop creation because I will be dropping this on the workshop. Well, probably when this video comes out so you can get it for yourself and, you know, haul some cars around, mess around with it, you know, get a squid to attack it for all you want. I don't know, but yeah, that is probably where i will be ending this episode here so look out for a future episode on this boat where i you know take it out put it up against some big waves some whirlpools and stuff and see how well it does against that but this is the end of the video so of course if you guys did like this please leave a like and consider subscribing to the channel to stay up with stormworks and more of my content but i've been great goodbyes but people need me and i need to go